Hello, welcome to lecture 6 of ELEC Engine 2 CI5. I'll be discussing here multiple resistance networks. In the previous lectures, we discussed the series and parallel connections, but as we will see, usually electric circuits are more complicated than simple uh, series and parallel connections. Uh, you have to uh, you find different all type of combinations of series parallel, and sometimes you find combinations that are not series or parallel, and you have to use transformation like the y to delta and delta to y, which we'll be addressing in the uh, in the next lecture. So for now, for this lecture, we'll be talking about circuits that have multiple resistors, and these resistors we can simplify them by using successive application of um, uh, series and parallel connections, uh, and we can calculate, of course, the voltage and voltages and currents everywhere using current division and voltage division rules. So, so far we already know that you, if you have um, a number of resistors connected in series, connected in series means you have the same current flowing in them. This means that the total resistance seen into between the, these two branches, for example, is going to be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So I can replace these three resistances by one resistance called R equivalent. Okay? And if I have three resistors connected in parallel like this, you can see this is one node. This is the same node, okay? So this is node number one, this is node number two. But what I mean that these three points are one node and these three points are one node. So the resistance R1 and the R2 and the R3, they are all connected between the same two nodes. And in that case, they are in parallel. They have the same voltage across them. So between, uh, between their terminals, you are going to see the same voltage. So between here and here, you see the voltage V. So the current flowing into uh, the first one is V over R1. The current flowing here is V over R2. The current flowing here is V over R3. The equivalent resistance seen between these two terminals uh, are given by this expression. 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So if I know R1, R2, and R3, I can use this expression to calculate the equivalent resistance. So I can get rid of these three and replace them by simple equivalent resistance. Okay, uh, and an, an alternative form for that, remember the conductance is the inverse of the resistance and it is in Siemens, not in, resist in, in ohms. So 1 over R1 is called G1, 1 over R2 is called G2, 1 over R3 is called G3, and 1 over R equivalent is G equivalent. So this is this is simple application of series and parallel connections, but in a, in a typical circuit, we have many branches uh, that can be reduced uh, to get a very simple circuit from which you can calculate the input resistance and you can calculate the current. So, our rules of reduction will start by the circuit. We'll try, if you find any series combination, we replace them by one resistor. If you find any barrel combination, we replace them by one resistor. Gradually, slowly, the circuit simplifies and then at the very end, you should be able to reduce the circuit if you are, have only one source to only one resistance connected to that source. We call that resistance the equivalent resistance seen by the source. Okay, so regardless of how complicated the circuit is, if you do successive reduction, successive simplification, any circuit can be reduced between the two terminals of one of the sources into just one equivalent resistance. And later we'll, st we'll, uh, we'll study a theorem called Thevenin theorem that shows you indeed that between any two terminals you see one equivalent resistance. And this will be a part of a later, of a later chapter. Okay, so these are steps of reduction. Eliminate all short-circuited uh, resistances. You have some short-circuited, eliminate them. Add resistance in series. Of course, this in series, not in series. But this is what happens when you have uh, <laughs> uh, automated selection of your words on. Um, add all resistances that are in parallel. Use barrel expression. Remove these barrel resistances. Um, current to different branches can be calculated. But the very interesting thing is once you have did the reduction, you will have to go backward in order to calculate the currents and voltages in different branches. Okay? So in, in, the, in the forward direction, we are eliminating uh, series combinations, barrel combinations, and we're reducing the circuit into a very simple circuit. But when you want to calculate the currents and branches in all uh, the currents in all branches, you have to go backward actually, as I will show you in the number of examples that will follow. 
Okay, so this is our first example. This approach, this or this lecture does not really have much theoretical content, but you have to know how to use series barrel connection, current dividers, voltage dividers, have to use them to simplify a circuit. So here we have this circuit here, we have one source, it's 10 volts, and it's supplying a current IFT. Of course, this current will flow this way, it will split here, and part of the current will continue this way, it will split here, and then the rest of it will continue this way, and all these currents will sum together at this node and then come back to this to the to the uh, source to close the circuit. Our target here is to find uh, the current flowing in this circuit, uh, the current I of T which is being drawn from the source. So I have to find the input resistance seen looking into this circuit. Okay? So if I look into this circuit, I, I should be able to replace all these combinations here by a single resistance connected to the 10 volt source and this will give me the equivalent resistance or the input resistance it's called the equivalent resistance or the input resistance source resistance and the current I of T will be equal to the 10 volts divided by this equivalent resistance so let's take a look at this circuit we have this 2 ohm is in series with these 2 ohm any current flowing here will continue here so these two can be replaced by one resistance which is 4 ohm okay so now I have between here and here 4 ohm. But this resistance is connected also between this node and this node. So you have here 4 ohm in parallel with another 4 ohm. So I can replace them by 4 ohm by 4 ohm over 4 ohm plus 4 ohm. You get 2 ohm. So this, this whole combination here I can replace them between this point and this point by a single resistance of 2 ohm. Now this 2 ohm will be in series with this resistance. You can see you have this two, this sorry two kilo ohm. You have this two kilo ohm flowing in, and everything here was really was replaced by two kilo ohm. Okay, so two kilo ohm, and you have another two kilo ohm. You end up with four kilo ohm. So you have four kilo ohm connected between these two terminals, but these four kilo ohm are in parallel with this twelve kilo ohm. Then between here and here, I can replace everything by twelve multiplying four over twelve plus four which is going to be equal to 3 kilo ohm. So the total resistance seen, I can simply say, it, just by inspection here, is going to be 9 kilo ohm in series with 3 kilo ohm, so the total resistance is equal to 12 kilo ohm. Okay, so what you are going to be doing, you are going to create uh, a number of reduced graphs for the circuit. You draw the circuit a number of times after you have done a reduction steps, and we need these graphs. Because we are going to, as I said, go back again and calculate all the currents in all the branches using these graphs. Okay, so let's watch the reduction steps. 2K is in series with 2K, so I replace these two by one resistance, which is 4K. 4K, now this 4K is in parallel with this 4K. They share the same start and end node. So I'm going to replace these two by one resistance, which is 2K. Okay? So now this 2 kilo ohm is in series with another 2 kilo ohm. So 2 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm will give you 4 kilo ohm in series, okay? So you have 4 kilo ohm. So this now how the circuit looks like. 4 kilo ohm between these two points in parallel with 12 kilo ohm. So I'm going to replace these two by one resistance, which is 3 kilo ohm. Then the whole circuit was, was reduced into a 9 kilo ohm in series with 3 kilo ohm, which will give me a 1 input resistance or 1 equivalent resistance of 12 kilo ohm. So after you have done these reduction steps, this is what you end up with, 9k in parallel with 3k, which you can replace by 12 kilo ohm. So between the terminals of the source, which is not shown here, I just calculated the equivalent resistance. So between the terminals of the source, I see 12 kilo ohm. So the current that's going to be drawn from that source is equal to the 10 volts divided by 12K, and this will give you 0.83 milliampere. Okay, so for, the, for this part, I did not really require any current so far, but I, I already solved the circuit. I know the input current that's being drawn from the source, and I can use it to calculate the currents everywhere and the voltages everywhere. So I have now to go backward. I have now to go backward using this same graph, these reduction graphs that I created and use them to calculate the currents and voltages everywhere. 
So we're gonna repeat that same example, but my target here is to find the currents I1, I2, I3, and I4. Given that I of t is given, which is equal to 0.83 milliampere. So already solved for the current. We we did the reduction steps. We reduced the whole circuit to 9k and sealed with 3k, and we calculated the current. I would like now to go back and calculate all these branch currents. Again, and at this example, I gave it in the lectures many times. This looks like a pipe, water pipe. It will split here into two, two pipes, and this one will split here into two pipes, and eventually all of them will recombine and return to the source again. Okay? So, we have now to go backward using our reduction graphs. This current is 0.83 milliampere. It will split into I1 and the I2. So, this is current division. What is the ratio is going to be used? Okay, I have to, I have to see... What is the equivalent resistance between here and what's the equivalent resistance between here, between these two terminals? So let's go and, and see how this is happening in the next slide. Okay, so these are my reduction graphs, and if you don't mind, I'll go backward. I'll start from here. I start from the end, not from the beginning. I start from the end. I have already 0.83 milliampere flowing in. It's, divi it's divided between 12 kilo ohm. And 2K in barrel with 2K. Remember, this 2K is 4K in barrel with 4K. But I don't care about that. So we have here 0.83 milliampere. is divided between 12 kilo ohm and 4 kilo ohm. Then I'm going to say use the division ratio. The current, um, the current I2, this one here, is equal to 0.83 milliampere multiplying 12K over 12K over 4K. So this is I2 here. This will give you 0 0.6225 milliampere. I can get I1 in the same way. The current I1 flowing here is equal to the total current, which is 0.83 milliampere, multiplying 4K over 4K plus 12K. And if you do that, you end up with 0 0.207 milliampere. Okay? Um, now, I found I1 and I2. I have to move forward. I go back again in the reduction steps so these two kilo ohm are actually 4k in parallel with 4k so this means that this current i2 will be split into i3 and i4 according to the reduction ratio to the current current division ratio so um this is we already calculated i2 it's 0 0.6225 milliampere because this is 4k and this is 4k i2 will be split evenly between i3 and i4 so I3 is equal to I4, so equal to equal to one half I2 as shown here. So each one of them will be this number divided by two. You get 0 0.31125 milliampere. As you could see, I went backward here. Okay. Now I can also go backward here and expand this 4k into 2k plus 2k, which means that the current I4 is flowing in both of them. Okay. So this is I4. This is I3. This is I2. This is I1, and this is the total input current. So now you draw the circuit. After you have all the currents, you have this graph here showing you the currents flowing everywhere. And of course, you can use KVL to verify your answer. I leave, it, I leave this one for you. You can verify that the, the voltage supplied by this source is equal to the sum of this drop plus this drop plus this drop, or the sum of this drop plus this drop, or the sum of this drop plus this drop plus this drop. You can use this loop or this loop or this loop to verify that your answer is indeed correct. And as I advised you in the lecture, after you get your final answer, take a minute to, to see whether your numbers make sense or not. Okay, because sometimes you make mistakes, they can be repairable. You can go back and maybe fix any mistake that you may have done. So um, I leave it for you to do this check. Apply KVL in this loop and make sure that it indeed applies. Apply KVL to this loop, make sure that it indeed applies. And then apply KVL to this one as well. All of them should give you the sum of zero for all the sum of voltages, either in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Okay, here we have a second example. Um, we have a circuit. Uh, this circuit contains one, two, and three voltage sources. They are in series. You can see they are in series here. If there's a current flowing in this part, it's going to continue in this branch. It's just one branch. Okay? 
and uh, we'd like to calculate the total current being drawn uh, here in this sort in this loop okay it and i would like to determine this current i1 flowing in the 1.5 k kilo ohm i would like to determine the voltage v note across the 600 ohm resistor okay this circuit looks looks complicated but if you think about it it's actually it can be significantly simplified why this 2 kilo ohm is hanging in the air it's connected to one node but it's not connected to something else so there is no current flowing here because it does not have any return uh, connection to the circuit it's hanging in the air i can simply take it out so this 2 kilo ohm is not there this 22 kilo ohm is connected between this node and this node but it's also shorted by this piece of wire this is zero resistance and as we mentioned in class if you have a resistance short circuited means it's connected in parallel with a zero ohm resistance with a short piece of wire it means that it's not in the circuit any current flowing this way will simply continue in the short circuit and they will ignore this one so this one can be also eliminated it's not there let's take a look at these resistances this is one branch in parallel with the second branch in parallel with the third branch okay but all these three branches are shorted by this branch okay this also short circuit so any current flowing this way will continue here and will com completely ignore these three so so in these three are, are not really in the circuit either so the circuit actually contains uh, one resistance 1.5 k one resistance 600 ohm one resistance 900 ohm uh, in this loop as we agreed in class if you have number of voltage sources connected in series we can replace them by one voltage source here you have 12 trying to push current this way one volts trying to push current this way so you get 13 you have three opposite so the the equivalent voltage for these three here in this branch will be equal to 10 volts and if you have this one 130 ohm and 120 ohm are connected in series so i can replace these two by one resistance which is 250 ohm remember the same current flowing here will continue in the 120 ohm okay so we are now all set we will get rid of 90 percent of the circuit it's not as hard as it looks and then we end up with a much simplified circuit so after you do the reductions i advise you to do this what we'll end up having 600 ohm 0.6 kilo ohm in series with 0.9 kilo ohm this is one branch here and this this total resistance is in parallel with 1.5 kilo ohm remember this is one branch and this is a second branch and these two branches share the start and the end point so you have 1.5 k in parallel with 1.5 k then the equivalent resistance of these two will be one half 1.5 k if you have two resistances with the same value then their equivalent is equal to one half their value so we have here 0.75 k and so this the, the circuit now can be reduced to 0.25 k in series with 0.75 k then the total input resistance seen by the source is equal to one kilo ohm okay and this is what i wrote here that the equivalent resistance is equal to this one in series with this parallel combination this barrel combination is 1.5k in parallel with 0.6k plus 0.9k this is how we write it okay these two will give us 1.5k 1.5k in parallel with 1.5k will give you uh will give you 0.75k and uh, so when you sum it to 0.25k you end up with 1k so in other words i reduce the circuit one more step make it look like this so i can i can draw it this way 0.25k 0.75k and then you have your voltage source equivalent voltage source okay so this is 0.25k and this one is 0.75k okay so um so now we find the total input resistance and i now know what is the total current I know the resistance looking into this circuit between the terminals of the source. So between here and here, I see an equivalent resistance of 1K. Then the current drawn by the source will be equal to the 10 volts divided by the equivalent resistance, which is 1K. So you end up with 10 milliampere as shown here. Okay. What remains for me is to find the I1 and find V note. Okay. So we have now to use current division 
or volt or uh, or voltage division or whatever in order to be able to find uh, this uh, this this required uh, quantities okay so i will have to go one step backward because i'm looking out for reduction so i uh, I know this is the current flowing in, and as we agreed, when you start to calculate the currents, you have to go back in the reduction graphs that you created. So this is 10 milliampere. This 10 milliampere will be divided into one current here and another current here. Okay? The division issue, this is 1.5K and this is 1.5K. So the current, this 10 milliampere will be divided equally between this branch and this branch. So the current flowing here is 5 milliampere. It's one half of 10 milliampere. Why did I include the negative sign? Because simply when we when this problem was given to us, they gave us the direction of I1 as flowing from the bottom node to the top node, top node. While in 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 reality it's flowing in the opposite direction. Then I have to include it with a negative sign. The same thing is happening here for V node. If you have a current flowing in this branch this way, okay. This current will create a voltage drop plus minus, okay, plus minus this way. But notice that V naught is 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 giving this polarity positive minus. So V naught will be ob opposite to the drop happening around the 0.6k. Remember, we have five milliampere flowing here, and this is 0.6k. Then the drop is equal to five milliampere multiplied by 0.6k. But in order to get V naught, you have to include a negative sign. Why did I include a negative sign? Because the reference polarity of V naught is opposite to the actual polarity. The current is actually flowing this way, not this way. So this is why V naught is going to be equal to minus 3 volts. 5 milliampere flowing here multiplied by 0.6k. Okay, we have one more example. Um, we are told in this uh, example that the current drawn from the source is equal to 50 milliampere. We have only one voltage source, and this is how the circuit is drawn. We would like to calculate the input resistance seen by the source. So between these two terminals, this source sees one equivalent resistance. So we have to use successive reductions, series and parallel in order to reduce the circuit. Once I have done that, uh, I can redraw the circuit this way. I have, uh, I have the uh, E, I have my, my voltage source E. I have the equivalent resistance here, and I know the current. I know the current. The current is given. is equal to 50 milliampere. So if I do that, I can calculate E. What's E? Because E is equal to IR. IR equivalent of the whole circuit. And after I've done that, they are asking us to calculate VAB. VAB is the voltage difference between this point and this point. Um, and as I explained in class, if I ask you to calculate the voltage difference between point a and B, you have to draw a path that will go from B to A, okay, and then you sum all the voltage drops. So negative positive will be considered positive, positive negative will be considered negative. So you have to add this drop plus this drop plus this drop. What is the current flowing in this branch? Well, it is zero. Why? Because this resistance is hanging in the air. It's connected to this node. So there is no current flowing here. This is open circuit. It's not connected anywhere. Then there is no drop across this resistance. Okay, the current is zero and the drop is zero. So the voltage difference between point A and B, VEB, is the same as the voltage difference between this point here and point B. Okay, because this point and point A have the same potential. Because there is no current flowing between them, then there is no voltage drop. So what's going to happen? We'll first reduce the circuit to calculate only one input resistance between these two terminals, okay? And once we have done that, we'll be able to calculate E is equal to I multiplied by the input resistance. Once I have done this, I will go back and find the current in all the branches, okay? And use the current in the 40 ohm and the current in the 200 ohm to calculate the voltage difference between here and, he and point B. And the voltage difference between this point and point B, as we agreed, is the same as the voltage difference between point E and B. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do this. Um, first, 400 ohm is not in the circuit. It does not really make any difference. We have here 200 ohm in series with 400 ohm. Remember, there's no current flowing here. Whatever current is flowing in 200 ohm will go to 400 ohm. So these two will give us one equivalent resistance 600 ohm. 
This 600 ohm is in parallel with 400 ohm. So I can replace all these three resistances between these two nodes by one resistance which is equal to 240 ohm. It's 600 by 400 over 600 plus 400. Okay? So 600 and 400. If you apply the expression for the equivalent battery resistance, it gets 240 ohm. Now, this 240 ohm will be in series with 80 ohm. Then you get 320. So imagine there is one, one resistance connecting between here and here. And this now, after I got rid of everything else, and this one is 420. So 420 in series with 80. And these two are in parallel with 320. So everything between here and here will be reduced by one resistance, which is 320 in parallel with 320 is going to be 160 ohm. This 160 ohm will be in series with 40 ohm. Then the total input resistance will be equal to 200 ohm. Okay, I can even do it just by inspection without any writing because the numbers are nice here. Uh, you get just a division by one half all the time. So without doing any calculation, just by looking at the circuit, I can tell that the input resistance will be 200 ohm. Okay, let's see how we can do this through successive reduction. Okay, so we redraw the circuit. Um, 200 plus 400 will give us 600 ohm. 600 in parallel with 400 will give us 240. So I now I redraw the circuit again here. 320 is the same 320, but between here and here, I replaced, I I replaced um, the uh, I okay, okay. Let me go back step one step backward here. We said this is 600, 400. This is gonna be uh, 240. So this is fine. This is 240 in series with 80. This is okay. So this is what I have here. Okay, 320 is connected between here and here. So this is a reduction step. This is a following reduction step. Okay, now, this is very simple because this is 320 in parallel with 320 ohms. So, all, this, all these resistances can be replaced by one resistance between here and here. I can actually draw it this way because the red band between here and here of 160 ohm. If you have two resistances with the same value, 320 and 320, then the net combination will be one resistance of 160. Then the total input resistance, as we said, will be equal to 200 ohms. So we already found that. Okay? Or this expression, I usually write it this way, that the input resistance is equal to 40 in series with this barrel, this barrel combination. What is this barrel combination? 320 in barrel with 240 in barrel with, in series with 80. So find this series combination. Put it in barrel with 320, get the total resistance, put in series with 40 ohm. So you get 200 ohm. This is the input resistance. I found the input resistance. Then I found the value of E because I know what is the current flowing in the circuit. The current I is given to us. So I can replace this whole circuit by one resistance, which is 200 ohm connected to the source. So I found the the, uh, the resist input resistance. So um, we can simply see that E is equal to I R N. Uh, this is 50 milliampere. This is given. We found this one to be 200 ohm. If you multiply them, you see that your voltage source is equal to 10 volts. Now we go to the next step. We would like to calculate the currents in the different resistances to calculate the voltage VAB. And I have now to use the reduction steps. I have to go backward in the reduction steps. This is 50 milliampere. This is 320 ohm. This is 320 ohm. So this current will be divided equally because this is equal to this one. This total resistance is equal to this one here. So you get 25 milliampere flowing here, 25 milliampere flowing here. Okay. This 25 milliampere, we have to go back again the reduction step. Uh, this 240, this 240 was actually two barrel combinations 400 ohm in parallel with 200 and uh, 240 ohm okay let's see let's go back sorry i'm sorry this 240 is this uh okay let's see here where did it go yeah so yeah that's fine i'm sorry so this is 200 this is 400 this 200 400 600 in barrel with 400 gave us 240 so this 240 ohm is really 
this barrel combination. Okay, so I know what is the current flowing here. It's 25 milliampere. Okay, this current will split between one current will go this way and one current will go this way according to the current division ratio. If I want to get the current I4, which I'm going to be using in calculating v, VAB, this current here is equal to 25 milliampere multiplying 400 over 400 plus 600. Okay, so over 1,000. So 25 milliampere, 400 over 400 plus 600. So this is the division issue that you get. You get that I4 is equal to 10 milliampere. And because this is 25 milliampere, I3 must be equal to 15 milliampere. Okay, so now we know that current is flowing everywhere in the circuit. This is 50 milliampere. This is 25 milliampere. This is 25 milliampere, which will be split into two currents. This one is 10 milliampere, and this one is 15 milliampere. I tried to be organized. I went back and redrew the circuit again and put all the currents I calculated. 25 milliampere will split into 25 milliampere. And another 25 milliampere that will continue is not shown here. I could expand this as a piece of wire. But this 20, other 25 milliampere is the sum of this one plus this one. So 10 milliampere will go this way, 15 milliampere will go this way. This 10 milliampere will continue here, and then the circuit is closed. Now I want to calculate VEB, so I will add this voltage drop plus this voltage drop. Remember, I will draw this path that goes from B to A. Okay? This is positive negative because of the direction of the current, so this will be negative. So this is minus 40 multiplied by 50 milliampere. This is positive negative. Remember, we calculate negative positive to be positive. So this is negative as well. Okay? So this is telling you that point B actually has a higher potential than point A. This is why VAB is going to be negative. So this drop here is equal to minus 10 milliampere multiplied by 200. So these are the two voltage drops. This will give you minus 2 volts. This will give you minus 2 volts. So this is minus 4 volts. So the, this point is lower than point B by 4 volts. And point A is also lower than point B by 4 volts because there is no current flowing here. The current here is equal to 0. So the drop here is 0.